Yeah, that's that's what it is. Yeah. All right. We're, so yep. okay, we're going. We're good. Okay. We're going. All right. We're going. Yes. All right. Hello, everybody. Yay! Hey, what's up? Suddenly, this got awkward. It's uh, it's let's play Russian tanks day. It's let's play Russian tanks day. Well, it's it's actually more like they buffed a couple of tanks um, this week on Tuesday, and I wasn't able to go over them. But the thing is, the lines that they buffed. Uh, I I've mentioned this in the past that if they ever brought the T forty four up, it was going to be an absolute monstrous tank. I I mentioned that how long ago? Like a year uh-huh. or so ago, something like that talking about it okay i'm I'm bringing over the desktop so yeah they buffed the crap out of the turret beforehand we had 80 millimeters of side armor on the uh turret which just could not hold up it could actually be turret armor right here 75 no because we got one from 100 to 130 i think that's what it is right there 100 to 130 so we originally had 100 millimeters but 130 the difference that makes is actually quite tremendous so against ap rounds uh you're well, actually AP, not APCR. You're gonna need 300 millimeters of pin to go through it, but the thing is, it's at an auto ricochet angle, so you're just gonna bounce. But the advantage that 130 gives you is tier 10 heavy tank. Let's say 60 TP. No, IS4 has a good heat pin. Uh, 340 heat pin. It's still red at 381 armor. On both sides. And then with the T-54 reforged as well, uh, with the turret armor, well, T-54, it's 409 millimeters on the side. So it's still a jump up. So you have 409 on both cheeks. Um, but yeah, once you use your gun depression, your hatch disappears. They need to load the heat rounds or high penetration sand rounds and pin the cheeks. But the side cheeks and the outskirts, not the uh, turret cheeks, but the skirt cheeks. Yeah. These things are just really difficult to come up, so you just come up at a slight angle like this, and then wiggle. Forward, backward, forward, backward. So, let's go ahead and jump into a couple of matches inside the T-44. We'll play one in the T-44 and one in the T-54. Okay, T-44 first. These buffs, Blade, I am just super stoked. So, like the T-54, uh, they brought it its reload from 8 seconds to 7.7 uh, penetration, they both got penetration bust from 190 to uh, 201 in the standard shell. That's all that was readjusted on the penetration. Uh, dispersion values yeah. on chassis rotation and dispersion values during uh, movement and uh, rotation. So during turret rotation probably and overall rotation. So This is movement, well, I told you so that's the, probably the, the entire The T-44-100 seemed like it had really good gun handling to me. Yeah, T-44-100 has amazing gun handling, but the T-54, they actually nerfed that tank to Oblivion, uh, I don't know how many years ago, and with this buff, they brought it back, and they also gave it view range, which has now yeah. made it just... 497. Well, it went from 360 to 380, which is the same as yeah. the uh, T-44-100. So, you now have this view range advantage over... You know, it's just it now that it has the view range, you can actually see what you're trying to hit. It's not just, oh, you're going to full send it and regret it. (laughs) That's all it is. It's just going to be now you actually have view range. All righty. Um. Speaking of which, yesterday we put a few matches inside these tanks. Uh, before we start, I actually wonder if a couple of those matches are actually here. We had the Agel, the AMBT, AMBT, a lot of AMBT, T44-100. Ah, Blade, I'm sad. I don't have the match that we had in our first game. Uh, uh, we got this one. See, that was such a great game. We got this one. AMBT, though, this thing is nasty. Yeah, it is. That is. We got. Did I have two matches in a row? Thirty-eight hundred. As as the and then a five thousand. It's still a dirty tank. And then the Haka Gel. Okay. Enough of that. <laughs> Let's stop slacking off. See, this is like we should restart now. <laughs> and then just go. We're slacking. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. They'll I'm ready whenever it. you are. <laughs> They'll get over it. I am. Well, <laughs> oh, 
would you? Oh, see? Why you made me t to pick by ten? All right, there you go. Okay. Okay. But yeah, yesterday, first game, our first, like exactly. Yesterday, our <laughs> first match of the day with the T-54s, we doubled up. It went to a four versus nine. And from four versus nine, it quickly went to four versus two. <laughs> Very quickly. <laughs> like it, we were in a, like we were on Pearl River. We were top tier and it literally came down to the last second. Um, I hate the fact that bases now get instant capped because a lot of people probably agree with me. You you kind of get in this comfort zone where you know that you can make it there at the last second. And that's exactly what happened that match. I, I spotted out the um, A43 Black Prince the last second right before the base got capped. And yeah. that just sucked, played. Like last second spot and then no shot you know like I, I, as i said um last night at work i thought about it and i'm all like only if you were on the hill you could have reset the cap yep if i had been on the hill yeah that, that's all it is okay let's go ahead let's push uh left towards the encounter let's see what we did inside the a and bt's that one game the, okay. the little new strategy for this map how we've been doing it Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, and my aiming's gonna be so off right now, Blade. I'm I need to get comfortable. Oh, oh shit! I just ran into somebody. Hey, Blade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <See? laughs> okay. Uh, encounter. I don't. I don't like this encounter because they can snipe you from across, but you can't snipe them. Oh, up on top of the hill. Seven degrees of gun depression on these tanks, too. It's so nice. You know, and then the T-54, it gets a little bit more aggressive with the thickness of the armor coming up in a couple of areas. But this one just has a lot oh, more lag. mobility. All right, we're probably going to want to push a little bit further right. Maybe not, because we got that Type 59 right here. Kind of hit an awkward spot where they have to overexpose a little bit to be able to hit you. That's probably the bet. God, I can't believe I freaking missed him. Ah, that was a... AP round or something from artillery. Okay, what do we got? They also need to like readjust the uh, aiming reticle. If you're hovering over an icon, it should instantly tell you what tank it is. Because I've had, I've had moments where you have two icons really close to one another, and yeah. it will never show you the other tank. You have to like find a really weird spot to be able to see what it is that's over there. Which is a little annoying at times. Man, I tell you what, I fired a whole bunch of shots, but I haven't hit nothing yet. Blade, you got uh, left side trailblazer, and a cap. I never that was. Did anything. <laughs> I can't believe they capped out. I didn't. I didn't realize they were capping. Okay. I missed every shot I fired. <laughs> missed every shot I fired. <laughs> All right, let's let's do another. That was way too fast. After after talking about how good the gun handling, is, <laughs> every shot I fired. So I don't use ventilation on mine. I use a uh, gun stabilizer. You know, boost boost that accuracy Nobody a little shot bit. At me either. I got shot at a few times, but I'm surprised that they didn't get a little bit more aggressive to reset that gap. You would have thought. Yeah. I don't like to hit somebody. I had that one guy, he sat there. I shot twice at him. He was sitting still. I missed him both times. <laughs> oh. 
No, but so T44 with the most recent buff, um, it's not like it's going to make a big difference compared to how it played previously. But the advantage to this new buff is, is that now you can actually block tier 10 heat rounds off your cheeks. And that's what makes a difference about this tank is that high penetrating heat rounds, unless it's coming from a Yagaru, will just bounce. Got another encounter. Left? Yeah, we're going to go left. Nice. And then the T-54, um, buffing the frontal armor from 200 to 220, I kind of don't see the advantage to that, because, I, I mean, may, maybe against, like, tier 7s, that makes a big difference, but against tier 8s, 9s, and 10s, uh, the frontal mantle doesn't really matter a whole lot. And then with all the matchmaking tests that are coming out, you'd think that they would give PC matchmaker a try at least once, you know? But they have It's 9s. I know it's 9s. Okay. Yeah. So, like, even these know. tanks have got so many benefits. T-54 and T-44, so many benefits. The only thing that they are lacking is penetration. So, it's like you have all these overwhelming statistics and decent armor, up. but then you're lacking in penetration. Yeah, we can go up. These tanks kind of have, like, everything that you want in a tank. But there's only one thing that they lack in, and that is oh, uh, there's a whole bunch of tanks over here. Penetration. I don't know. You'll be okay. Is that a T30? Any E75? I think I saw an E75. I could be super wrong though. Is that a two seven, two five seven blade back off. Oh my goodness. VK. <sighs> Yeah, you're going to want to back off. I mean, sure, you got a good turret, but if they're shooting the flat spots, they're going to go through like it's nothing. The standard pin bump from uh, 192. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see no if we can risk it. I'm going to risk it. There we go. No, see, I ain't got the gun depression, man. You, you want to try and find a spot. Like, where I'm at right here, this is kind of a... Uh... Okay, what, what do we have behind just... us? Tiger 2. Okay, so we got the AMX 50 and 100 right there. Careful, Blade. Heck yeah! What'd you bounce? Uh, the T30. Nice. There we go. Was that a 240 bounce or was that a absorption? I I like I don't think he's got the 90. That's for sure. But that's a really weird number to bounce. Oh, that fucker. Hey, Blade. Sorry. Curious. Go, T3's yeah, gonna they start right pulling. Through, I mean, right through the mantle. Well, of course, yeah. Like, the mantle is the weak spot, but the side cheeks can actually bounce. So you want to be a little bit careful whenever you're pulling on people. You just swap back over to standard rounds because I don't need premium to go through a T29. Or, or a T30? Yeah, T30s, they got the T29 hull. I know. <laughs> and then with the rate of fire you got, yeah, this thing can be extremely devastating. Wow, this is another really fast match. I didn't even realize it's already down to uh, just a couple of guys left. <coughs> oh, 
I gotta, I gotta be more patient, man. Yeah, that's uh, that went by way fast. That was just a steamroll. That felt wrong in so many ways. All we did was hold, and then all they did was fall apart really quick. Yeah, I couldn't get nothing to pin, man. Once again. Yeah. Because right. everything I was shooting at was all down, or was it heavy? Yeah. So let's go ahead, jump inside the T fifty four. So. There, there is kind of a thing about these two tanks that I've noticed. Um, it's play style. So the T-44, I like to get a little aggressive, get to a little bit more advanced positions, and then lock them down. But you've, you've got the power to wait and mobility to relocate nonstop, you know. But whenever I play the T-54 Mod 1, this is actually one tank that, for me, I like to hit a flank as hard as I can and then relocate somewhere else and kind of perform a hold and then see how the map sh slowly develops. Cause the T 54 for me is kind of like that guardian. You, you put it into a position and you stay there. You just hold as long as you can because you have the armor to essentially lock down. You have the gun depression, the seven degrees you have the same armor loadout as the T44-100, just thicker. And then... Eight. Yeah. And then along with that, you have quite a bit, dude. There's, <coughs> you know, you got a 120mm top plate. Your low plate's 120mm. Your side armor's 90mm. While on the uh, T44-100, you got 90mm armor with 75mm side skirts or 60mm side skirts. Can't remember, but you got space armor on the T44 100. I'm actually going to take a quick look. Side armor, 75. Frontal armor, 90. Okay. So, yeah, the T54 Mod 1 is just thicker all around, which sacrifices top speed and power to weight. Honestly, they're both good pickups. And T54, once upon a time, this was just not the tank you wanted to play because with the debuff they gave it, they destroyed its rate of fire. Had a slow rate of fire along with that. It's dispersion values were just not that good. I, I felt like I missed every single shot all the time. There's no artillery inside this match blade. And we're on uh, Lakeville. Yeah, this is going to be a little gross. Might want to load the premium rounds right away. Okay, IS-3. If I was inside the IS-3, I'd take this a little bit slow. Miniman. Okay, especially with the low profile that these things offer, you can um, put them... Yep, there's dispersion value showing itself. T-54 has just got a little bit of a worse gun. But it's not like it makes it bad to play. It's just a little bit different. There we go. Straight into the yep upper part of the uh, mantle. Even though it's 220, you know, it's thing is that 220 it doesn't really make a big difference from 200 to 220. Yeah, it's not like the the only way it would make a real big difference if it was like 240 millimeters of armor. And I mean that's putting another 20 on it. There's a lot of people here. I know, man. I can't hardly even get in here to get a shot. Okay. Okay. I would like to be at a little bit more of an angle than driving straight up, because straight up, you know, you can't really guard your turret whenever you're driving straight forward and backwards. I'd much rather be at an angle. That way, instead of just heading straight up, you're kind of coming in a little bit to the side. There we go. 
Should be good to push. Minuteman 252U. Uh, Hellcat 105. Angled just in time to bounce. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling. There we go. This is the armor showing itself now. Let's go for an overmatch. On the rear deck. Iron Rain. Loading those high explosives. Oh my gosh, played. Alrighty, here we go. Gonna pop right here. I'm just gonna full send. I don't really care. I got the hit points. I'm willing to risk them. Let's take down a... Oh, I missed. So the shell velocity too, it doesn't, it doesn't have the greatest shell velocity. Is he gonna kill himself? What the heck? Yep, he drove off cliff. The other guy's running across the map. Yep. I can't believe that landed. That was nice. I can't believe it did either. Yeah, I just... You, <laughs> like, for a split second, he popped up red. I'm like, fire! <laughs> just perfect. Okay. Nice. Nice. But no, dude, both these tanks, um, it, it oh, feels... Brothers in, Arms? brothers in Arms. First Class Mastery, high caliber. Brothers in Arms, though. Heck yeah, Brothers in Arms. So, with both these tanks and their buffs, <laughs> it, it's nice to see that, you know, finally the T-44 got some love. That's a tank I, I've been... I, I wanted to try and 3 market in under 100 games, but... I'm going to be honest here. Since it got buffed, that's not going to happen. Um, before <laughs> it got buffed, it was going to happen. But now that it's been buffed, it's it's damage standing increased by like a stupid amount. So we got the T yeah, T54 prototype. Its current damage standing is 2,469. Okay, so 2,469. And then we look at the T44 it's 2,872. So you can see that people are playing this one a lot more. And it's got 400 more than the T-54. Yet, once upon a time, they were identical. That was on Tuesday that they were identical. So I got 102 battles inside this now. Uh, where am I at all time? Probably nowhere near the all time board here. Uh, my lifetime on it, though, 3,961 WN8. I mean, it's, it's a performer, that's for sure. So... It's a great tank, and with everything that's been done to it, the past 90 days, you know, looking at the 90 days, it doesn't seem like people are performing good inside of it, but there's a lot of people that are just putting, you know, like 10 matches or something inside of it, and they're not going to pop up on that uh, overall board, but they're performing good inside the tank. That's all that matters, and its damage standing is going up. Now, one more thing. Uh, I do remember hearing people talk about like, oh, they might be a little bit too overpowered. We might want to debuff them again or lower what we gave them. Um, in my opinion, that's a bad business practice. And Blade will probably agree on this. Whenever you first introduce something, you're going to have an overwhelming amount of people who are going to be playing it. Yes. You know, and... You're, whenever something first gets, you know, released or gets buffed, who are the first people that play it? People the who people want that to the three best. market early, as quickly, as you know, can. or like someone's all like, "Oh no, it got buffed. I need to hit this now while the damage standing is still low," and that's why you see stuff get ramped up so high at times, and then after like a month or two, you see damage standing kind of stabilize a little bit more because now you have the regular people who are playing the tank that enjoy playing the tank are now actually playing it. And not the people that are just trying to three market or ace it. Yeah. So Which Acing a tank is still the stupidest thing they ever did. No, not acing. Four marking a tank was the stupidest or thing they ever did. Yeah, the, the fourth That's... mark 
caused so many problems. I, I on it, like I will never form arc a tank. If, if I hit 99% on a tank, I will drive in the open and get myself killed without doing any damage. I will, I would rather get myself killed then get a fourth mark. And that kind of go against how I play the game because I play for the win. I don't care about my W and 8. I don't care about my KD. I care about the win. The win's what matters to me more than anything else. Well, win uh, rate and survivability. Because if you survive know. if you survive your matches and you have a high survivability rate, it means that you're influencing those matches quite a bit. I had a tank that was at 69%. Nice. At its first mark. And now it's at like... I haven't played it, and it's down to like fifty-four percent on its fucking on its mark. Hey, Blaine. Because of, because I know. <laughs> I know. I don't have that beat. I'm trying. No, it's fine. But yeah, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, the win eight's gone up so high on it that that where I was at has dropped that much, all the way down to fifty-four percent from sixty-nine. Nice. That's a lot. But yeah, no, it's just. The the matchmaker, another thing is, is like uh, the A and B T that just got released and it's, it's reload is destroyed. Okay. I remember I, I've got friends that play PC. Okay. I talked to a few of them and they played the super test and or the A and B T first got dropped inside the super test for testing. Um, they limited the top speed. That way it could benefit from a really good reload. That's why it's top speed stuck at 40. That's why it feels so sluggish. It's because the tank was extremely powerful, but the best way to limit it, to give it that better reload, was by destroying its top speed. Taking away its mobility. But it's mobile. You know, 40's not no slouch. You know, that, that's decently quick. But it's not like um, the T-44 right here that goes 52 with like a 20-something a power to weight. You know? Never mind, horsepower to weight's 15.52. This thing does not feel like it's 15.52. But, you know, like, it, for instance, the AMBT that just got released, that's the reload the Basante should have had. And yet, the Basante still doesn't have a reload buff. It makes no sense to me with, with what routes they're taking. And for those of you guys who don't know, Pain God, the lead developer inside the entire world of tanks, is quitting. And um, I like to call him the emulator. Let's make that happen again. So, you know, it, it's kind of not like I'm not back into the game heavily, but it's since he's leaving, I kind of feel like it's time to jump back on a little bit, but not as much as what I was. You know, my, my monthly matches right now is like 150. And it used to be I put 600 matches a month in the game while working yeah. full time. You know, I, I, and keep in mind, I'm working straight through this weekend, so that's going to be fun. Now, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, the new lead developer that's going to come in, I'm, I'm not expecting anything to change, and the reason why is because he's going to get influenced by the previous people that have already been there. You know, they're going to stop and be like, well, we didn't do it like that, we did it this way. Hopefully someone comes in and puts their foot down and says, hey, we're doing it this way. There is no influence. This is the way. You know. You know how many battles I've done in the last 30 days? Like uh, 80? 88. I was extremely close. But no. that, that's what Not it many. is. We, we, our, our time we've put into tanks has dwindled quite a bit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like we're gone. We're, we're going to play, just, but just not often. I was often. just really disappointed in the... Uh, in the Artillery 2.0. <laughs> 3D audio. There's your balance. Right. Yeah. So they hype it up for a year and a half, and we get hit with 3D audio. That was, like, they, a, there's a... a brighter uh, tracer. Woohoo! Yeah, they already made the tracers brighter like a year ago. I know. They made them even brighter. Hey guys, ramp ramp up the brightness. Oh, I mean it. <laughs> it's a shooting I wonder. Star now. I want <laughs> make a wish. Um, <laughs> I wish it wouldn't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But no, it's just you. You have all this time to do something, and 
out of nowhere, because this this is what came to my mind whenever Artillery 2.0 dropped, and it was 3D audio. They did absolutely nothing. They told us that they were going to do something, and then at last second, they're all like, oh god, what can we do? And it turns out that all they did was take um, the missiles from Cold War, took their audio, 3D audio that they were using, transferred it to the artillery, and then made the traces brighter, which is just a quick swap. It probably took someone less than like two days to do all the programming on that. Okay. So you spent a year and a half and you put the most minimal amount of effort into it <laughs> just to put something out. I mean, so, it's like somebody woke up and said, hey, I know we got to do something with this today, so why don't we do this? Exactly. <laughs> just wing it. Thing right? is, is like, it, they were, it was hilarious because I have screenshots of uh, the test server Discord during the time that they were doing that. And Max Chaos specifically said, no matter what we do, 60% of the community is not going to like it. And I stopped and I'm all like, that makes no sense how 60 community is not going to like it. If if you do two things, forty percent of the community shouldn't like it. Not sixty. You, it should be more right. of a positive on sixty percent than negative. Right. You know. But the problem is the only people you have inside your Discord support artillery. But then again, I don't ever see a single artillery supporter in your Discord. I see people who absolutely despise it. And then three D audio, it wasn't no sixty percent that disapproved. It was ninety nine point nine. I'm not going to say 100% because it was like 99% of people disapprove of this message. I mean, I could sit here and say approved by, but I'm not going to because that's political. But, um, yeah, it's just. Well, I knew. Before scratch that. Approved by Wargaming. Before they ever put 2.0 out, I knew they weren't going to change anything. When I read in that blog or that, uh, that thread where that, the guy said that. We don't see any problem with artillery. Therefore, we're probably not going to change anything. And they didn't. Yeah. And with a lot of the stuff that they've done, they've lost a lot of people from the community. They've lost a lot of support. They've had content creators outright just up and leave, you know, and then come back two years later. So, but, I mean, I just don't understand why they they don't understand. I mean, they nerfed it on PC. And oh, they, they okay. The I, I will be completely honest. PC nerf a bit too far with the HE changes. Okay, where it was beforehand, I was completely okay with that. Getting hit for 600 damage in a, in a medium tank that it has lighter armor but not the thickest, getting hit for 600 is a lot better than getting hit for 14 and dying. You know, right? I would rather yeah. get hit for 600 than get deleted. Or get one, yeah, they yeah. get one shot, or get hit and be left on 50 hit points. You know, like I've, I've mentioned, it's literally the penetration that's the problem right now. If they were to cut the penetration in half in all artillery and leave the damage the way it is, we will see a dramatic drop. <laughs> a dramatic drop in the damage that we get hit with. I have, I have to cough really bad. Uh, I muted myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we'll see a dramatic drop in damage. And that might be the only thing that we need to do. It's just, you know, like uh, the ROM Ponzer that they buffed. Its problem wasn't the fact that it, it's struggling. Its problem is, is that it's a slower head, like it's a slower medium tank. It's a heavy medium tank. But all the armor is in the front. You know, I, I believe um, with... Uh, the American nuke hits for 2100 or something like that. 24. I, that? I think it's like 24. 24. See? So... See, that's ridiculous. That's yeah, ridiculous. I I got rid of my artillery because I don't play artillery. Because to me, it's broken. It it's just absolutely broken. It's the entire reason why I don't play them. And then they uh, no, it's twenty two twenty five, so twenty two fifty. Twenty two fifty. For most tanks, that's that's all the hit points they have. The E five has two thousand two hundred hit points. All right, could be wrong about that. Hold on. E five has twenty two hundred hit points. Yep. So that's yeah. a one shot. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's that's what it is. Two seven nine E's got twenty four hundred. Yeah, and load an AP shell and go through its frontal armor like paper. So, <coughs> and then the you know the two seventy seven, it's it's twenty two hundred. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, for most of them, the the two six eight version five, 
Oh, 268 version 5. Don't even include that in the list. That's another tank that they broke. That thing has got better still concealment than super heavy tanks. It has the same view range as most super heavy tanks. And not to mention, it has better camouflage when firing than super heavy tanks. Okay. It's a fun tank. It matches super heavies, but (laughs) performs better. So that's a problem. E4 matches super heavies, performs better. So there's that. It's not quite as broke as the Turan, though. Turan? Oh, yeah. That's just. Yeah, hopefully they know they made a mistake on that one. Uh, other than that, you yeah. guys, hope you enjoyed. Uh, we are kind of back, not entirely, but we're trying. That, that's all it is. Um, we'll, we'll try to get a few more in. Yeah. Uh, AMBT, honestly, that's the reload that Basante should have had. And I've been enjoying the AMBT. I've had a we lot of really one, nasty matches inside the right. AMBT. Next time, we, next time we do this, we should play that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. dude, it, it's a really good tank. And if you're running two it's of them, f- that is just yeah. disgusting. I honestly, <laughs> if you guys haven't already picked up the AMBT, I recommend it. It's reload yeah. compared to the damage isn't the greatest, but it's still fun. I've, I've been up against tens and absolutely decimated them. Problem is, it's one of those tanks that I run nothing but premium on. The yep. number one reason why I run nothing but premium on it, it's standard shells. Their penetration is not the problem. The problem is, is your ammo capacity compared to how long it takes to swap a magazine. If we had intuition in the game, I would be super stoked just to be like, I'm going to load an even amount of standards, even amount of premiums and swap. But instead we have advanced reload, which is like the laziest way to make a game mechanic. Just make it to where you can swap instantly. Um, If you guys haven't already seen... Like it, it's a broken piece of equipment for some tanks. Not all tanks benefit from advanced reload as much yeah. as like super heavies with big derp guns do. You can maximize your DPM with advanced reload. Uh, my E100 review is probably the best one, not the reforged, but the actual review. So this is before a ton of stuff got implemented that I, I had a nine kill game inside my E100. <coughs> I can't remember the damage I did, but it was up there. Just being able to swap ammunition instantly without, you know, having a reload in the way is wrong. And that's all it is. <laughs> so, yeah, other than you guys, have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. Hope you enjoyed the content. Um, also, uh, I, I do have a question for quite a bit of people. It's like... What's that? My content, I actually want to know. I, this is something I, I thought about last night. I wanted to ask this in a video or on stream. What video have I put out for you guys that you found to be extremely beneficial and has helped you um, kind of surpass your limits a little bit or gave you a better idea on how to play a certain tank or how to play a certain category or if just watching where I go on maps is helpful to you guys? Because I did have a plan to get a pad and mark out locations to go, but I... It's a lot of money to get one of those uh, art pads. I mean, I'm looking at like 800 bucks for like the cheapest, and I just haven't done it yet because I don't know how long I'm going to continue, you know, content creation. Which honestly, I, it, I kind of hit a point where it's like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to make a video. But n- the past few months, it's kind of been like that. I've slowly just been going down and down and down, and I don't oh, want sh- this to end up as like. You know, I'm forcing myself to do something because whenever you force yourself to do something, whenever you look on it in the future, you look back on it, you think to yourself, oh, that sucks. I never want to do that again. I don't want content creation for me to end up like that. I want it to end up like I want to do this. I want to jump on and do it. I don't want to feel like I have to do it, you know, because whenever you feel like you have to do it, that's whenever you slowly just right. go away from it. It's like working a job you don't like. But you you quit and you never come back. Yeah, we gotta be having fun. Yeah, and that's that's what that's what's really killed us in the past couple of months is we just haven't been having any fun. Yeah, each time we play our eights, um, this new matchmaking test that they're doing right now, there's another one. Oh, we haven't seen uh, a lot of tens, so we've kind of seen a lot of nines and a little bit more consistent eights. But each time they do like double silver tier tens, we just yeah. don't play. Yeah. Because it's double silver tier tens is the most toxic thing for the game, so yeah. Yeah, when they do that, you might as well just tuck your eight eights away. <laughs> uh, play because seven. 
Literally, just play seven. Right. Play seven all day. That, that's what it is. All right, you guys. We pushed a little bit past the time that I, I wanted to stop. So, all right. yeah, that that's it. Hope you guys have a great day. We're out of yep. here. See you soon. Hope. <laughs>